What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist and today I'm back to bring you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. If this is your first time coming to the channel, this is a channel where we bring you lore on all things Warhammer 40k, 30k, and a little bit of fantasy and Age of Sigmar sprinkled on there. So today we are continuing the weapons and war gear of the Primarchs. We've gone pretty much halfway through and today we will cover Mortarian, Horus, and Magnus. Three heavy hitters uh, that are all pretty, pretty badass in their own respects. Uh, they're all traitorous, so today is a very heretic lore. Now since uh, Mortarian is about to come out and be a playable figure on the, battle, on the battleground or tabletop, whatever you want to call it, uh, let's dive into his lore first. Now Mortarian is also known as the Lord of Death, or the Prince of Decay, and he is, like I said before, a Chaos Worshipper. Actually, to put it in awesome terms, he is the greatest demon prince of Nurgle, and he is the demon primarch of the Death Guard Space Marines. Now, if you want to learn more about his lore, we do have a 40 facts on him. Actually, we have a 40 facts on all the primarchs, so check out that playlist at the end of this episode. Uh, just a little bit more lore on Mortarian is that Mortarian actually hated psychers. And then bit by bit, he learned that he himself is a psyker. So he had to accept his own disgust in himself. And then he basically became Nurgly infested. So let's dive into his weaponry. So his weaponry begins with the Barbaran Plate. So the Barbaran Plate is of Mortarian's own design, and it fuses power armor technology with his own upbringing, meaning it is designed to not only protect him in battle, but to augment his own singular physiology and environmental needs. Now, he was born, or he wasn't born, but he was transferred to this planet of Barbarus, where it has like poisonous vapors, and eventually he became 100% dependent on these vapors. So the Barbaran Plate basically mixes trace elements of these poisonous gases into the air that he breathes, and it basically sustains him. Uh, not so much so now, since he is a demon, so like the warp sustains him in a way, but he still looks pretty badass. Uh, next up, we have the Lantern. So the Lantern is a drum-barreled energy blaster, and it is the preferred sidearm of Mortarian. Its origins are unknown, and it's basically like a beefed-up plasma pistol. Silence. Silence is the name given to his massive two-handed battle scythe, which has a blade that is almost as long as a human. Uh, it is a formidable weapon, and it is accounted as one of the most fearsome blades wielded by any Primarch. Since Mortarian's finding by the Emperor during the Great Crusade, there have been dark whispers that this blade is indeed Xenos Tainted Origins. And some are familiar with the legend of the Death Guard Primarch's early life, believe that it is none other than the weapon of Mortarian's father. So, yeah, it has a little bit of a duality to him. Because as we all know, Mortarian hated his dad, and yet he wields this blade that could potentially be that of his father. So, again, more duality to this Primarch who hates psychic powers, but he's a psyker himself. So that being said, uh, he also has some Phosphex bombs, and then uh, he has some more Nurgly stuff to him. Uh, we'll probably do a whole lore to cover his new lore, his new weaponry and whatnot later on. But for now, this is all the lore we have on the war gear for Mortarian. Moving on, we have the big baddie of all of 40k, or 30k for that matter, Horus Lupercal. So Horus, otherwise known as the Lupercal, is uh, the Primarch of the Luna Wolves Legion, which then became the Sons of Horus Legion when he turned traitor. He was one of the best generals in the armies of the Emperor. He was, you could say, the best and brightest, and he became tainted. Um, he was actually empowered by all four Chaos Gods, which is pretty crazy since most gods only empower one individual. Uh, it's, it's very unlikely that this happens. It has been done before with the likes of uh, Bellacor, but uh, this guy is, he's, he's, he's nasty. So basically because of Horus, his actions damaged the Imperium of Man beyond repair, 
and it inaugurated the current age of the Imperium, where mankind is beset by countless horrific dangers, such as the Xenos, uh, Chaos, Tyranids, it's just, it's, it's looking very bleak, and the man to have caused all this is Horus. Now that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of all the lore on Horus. We do have, I believe it's a three or four part series on Horus Lupercal, going from his 30k days all the way to the fight with his father, the Emperor of Mankind. So check that out on our 40 Facts playlist on uh, Primarchs. Or you can pop open those uh, Horus Heresy novels and read up on uh, Horus yourself. Or just go to the, Wixi, the wiki or the Lexicanum. Uh, 4chan is also a great place to get lore and uh, some hilarious stuff. So uh, check those places out. But for now, let's dive into the war gear of Horus. Beginning with the War Master's Talon. So the War Master's Talon is a unique lightning claw which incorporates a twin-styled bolter that was a precursor to the modern day storm bolter. Uh, this Talon had long been Horus's favorite weapon. Some sources even claim that it was a relic that was found deep within the planet Sethonia and a product of mankind's dark age of technology. Currently it is wielded by Abaddon the Despoiler. After that, we have the Serpent Scales. So Horus's unique suit of Terminator armor is called the Scales of the Serpent, and it was one of the first prototypes of its kind, fashioned by the master adept Ertzi Malavus, and it was continuously being improved upon by the hand of the traitorous fabricator general of Mars, Kelbor Hall. So yeah, this was a pretty intricate piece of war gear. Um, it was proof against attacks of both brute and esoteric origin. It was sent from Mars to cement the alliance between Horus and the faction of the Mechanicum that would back his rebellion against the Emperor. Um, again, it was far surpassing any type of armor currently during that time. It was just an, an awesome piece of war gear. Um, also, an amber eye of Horus was placed upon the breastplate and it stared from the armor's torso and his shoulder pads. So again, you see his insignia all around his armor. And lastly, we have Worldbreaker. So Worldbreaker was a power maw the size of a man and it was marked out with an Imperial Aquila at the base of its grip. Uh, this weapon was capable of shattering armored ceramite, and it was also a symbol of Horus's rank as War Master of the Imperium. It was also said to have been crafted by the hand of the Emperor himself and presented as a gift to his favorite son on the day he became War Master. So this goes to show you that even the gifts of the Emperor can be tainted by chaos. Speaking of chaos, the next Primarch on our list is none other than the Red Demon of Zeech, Magnus the Red. So Magnus the Red is the Primarch of the Thousand Suns Traitor Legion, and he's one of the few surviving Primarchs, and currently he is an extremely powerful demon prince uh, in allegiance to the Chaos God Zeech. He was also known as the Crimson King and as the Red Cyclops. Uh, this guy was both a giant in physical and mental terms, uh, he was pretty tough, you know, in a duel, especially with his powerful psychic abilities. Now Magnus and the Thousand Sons have a bitter rivalry with the Space Wolves. They have come really close to basically bringing the Space Wolves Legion to extinction. And currently in the timeline, he has fought against Gilliman. And um, he almost uh, got the better of him, but thanks to the psychic blanks known as the Sisters of Silence, they were able to push the tide and uh, basically force Magnus back into the warp. Again, guys, if you want more lore on this, <laughs> we do have 40 facts, so go check them out. Again, playlist at the end of the description, or not the description, playlist at the end of the video. So now let's jump into this guy's war gear. Let's begin with his 30k war gear, beginning with the Arcane Litanies. So the bearer of the Arcane Litanies was protected from the powers of the warp and the desidents that reside in there. The Sci-Fire Serpenta is a handgun of prodigious size seemingly conjured to his grasp and need. There was always some debate even among Magnus's legion whether this powerful plasma weapon was truly a device or simply a manifestation of his psychic powers in physical form. After that, we come to the blade of An Nunara. 
taking the distinctive shape of the Kapshesh like sickle sword weapon, the prospering war god of ancient myth on Nunara, this force weapon combined ancient lore and imperial weapon technology into one, and it was a very lethal weapon to living creatures and battle engines alike. Finishing up Magnus's war gear for 30k, we have the Horned Raiment. So Magnus's unique suit of power armor was believed to be a tangible psychic force, an imperial energy that he could shift and change the appearance as he willed it. Oftentimes, this protected him against both ranged and melee weapons, despite its primitive appearance. And now on to his post-heresy war gear, beginning with the crown of the Crimson King. This blazing halo of psychic power that plays around Magnus' horns protects both his mind and body from harm. Next up we have the Blade of Magnus, which was formerly known as the Blade of Anunara, before the Primarch's fall to chaos. This ancient weapon changes according to Magnus' will, and its mutagenic powers extend to his victims. And once again we have the Horned Raiment. This is the same suit of power armor that he has worn since the days of the Great Crusade, and it has always helped him protect himself both from physical damage as well as psychic powers. And that is where I will end the lore for the war gear of the Primarchs today. We've got three heavy hitters done. We've got Magnus the Red, the Crimson King. We've got Mortarian, the Plague Father. And lastly, we have lore on Horus, the man who started the heresy. If you guys want to keep learning, stay subscribed and uh, like this video to show how much you guys enjoy these 40 facts. Um, again, tomorrow I will be continuing on with the weaponry of the Primarchs until we finally get through all 20 or 18 since the 2nd and the 11th are unknown to us. Um, so again guys, let me know what was your favorite weapon of this video and let me know in general what's your favorite Primarch weapon. Uh, and that's all I've got for you guys. Don't forget, we do have a YouTube, a Facebook, a Twitter, a Patreon, and an Instagram account. So check all those things for One Mind Syndicate 40k goodness. This has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Oh, <laughs>